seniors, please take your seats. On behalf of the Board of Trustees of Catlin Gable School, I welcome all of you who wholeheartedly love and support this class of 2021. Grandparents, parents, guardians, friends, siblings, teachers, and staff, thank you for your care and your and for championing these students. And thank you to the trustees in attendance today and for the care you take of our school. Thank you to the crew behind the scenes that have pulled together this event. Unique from last year and different from the many years before. Thank you for bringing to life a vision some of us parents have had for decades. And thank you to Mother Nature, who always seems to come through for us. And hello and welcome, seniors, to your in-person graduation. You deserve this and much more. I feel fortunate to have crossed paths with so many of you. Let's honor this class for their patience, discipline, perseverance, adaptability, and commitment. As if a Catlin Gable education was not preparatory enough, this pandemic has provided the development of some unexpected, painful, and valuable life skills. So I don't think it's a stretch to say that this is the most prepared for the world class ever to graduate from Catlin Gable. As a parent, I believe we are attracted to Catlin Gable for many of the same reasons. We are all drawn together by our commitment to education as a means of bringing empathy and justice to the world. Our community of families and teachers bring with them values that are then reinforced at school by our school leaders and by our mission. That synergy is something special remarkable and something to celebrate. I am so proud of and grateful for the education my kids received here. And frankly, I have been educated as well. Catlin Gable's commitment to lifelong learning is not just a vision, it runs deep. And it is alive when we recognize that we are an open-minded, growth mindset-oriented group of learners and teachers sharing knowledge and goodness. And we are imperfect like any human community and we listen and learn and make change. So who are these Catlin Gable graduates in the world? You can pick them out in a crowd. They are upstanding and outstanding citizens. They speak up and they stand up. They hold doors open and they leave doors open. They have wide eyes, open minds, and big hearts. To the treasure trove that is the class of 2021, every possibility is yours, and within you, every capability and competency. Congratulations and blessings to all of you, students and supporters alike. Thank you. Um, and please join me in welcoming to the podium our wonderful head of school, Tim Bazemore. Thank you, Indra. Welcome, everyone. I'm not sure how many of you saw the bald eagle circling up here above us just a minute ago. It, it, is it still here to the southeast? Or to the east, perhaps? That is, that, that's a real bald eagle, just in case you're wondering. That's not being uh, managed from the stage up here. Well, congratulations, class of 2021. You have worked hard. You have played hard. You have persevered. You have succeeded. And we are so proud of you. And we are so excited for you. Congratulations. The poet, Billy Collins, you may know him, said he only knows two things. One, that life is beautiful. And two, that life is sad. 
This year confirmed that observation as life served up both at once. It's been hard not to feel a sense of loss, missed opportunities, and memories foregone. But today, today, we set aside that sadness and we embrace the beauty of life. It's a day to be together and shout out and laugh and sing and cry out in joy. A day to recognize your good fortune at being alive together here on this field, in this forest, the privilege of having gone to this school with these classmates, guided by these teachers, supported and loved by these parents and family members. We teach you many things here at Catlin Gable in your time here, whether that's a year or two or 12 or more years. From the language of ge geometry to the structure of an essay to how to blend colors on canvas and how to use a bandsaw. All of these have value. We try to teach you above all else, however, what Dr. Cornell West calls your originality, like a fingerprint, which is your unique voice. In every learning experience here at Catlin, over the years, we've sought to draw you out, to ask what you think, to challenge you to speak up in your original way. And you've responded with fierce convictions and passionate beliefs. Your voices push us, they delight us, they surprise us, and at times they enlighten us. And as the world tosses and turns all around us, beset by inequity and division, we need your 81 voices in the world, speaking out for inclusion, integrity, and kindness. Tonight, we will hear words of wisdom from a classmate. We're looking forward to that. We will also hear words of wisdom from a beloved teacher and your school leader and parent of a class of 2021 member as well. But I want you seniors to use your voice one more time on this campus as well. And this time, not necessarily to defend your point of view or your beliefs or to self-advocate, but to share your appreciation for each other because your time together here is fleeting. So I'm gonna ask you to indulge me, seniors, for a moment, and I'm gonna give you a couple of minutes. I'd like you to think of a word of appreciation, a compliment, a thank you, a nod of recognition to a classmate on either side of you or perhaps behind you or in front of you. So please go ahead and do that now. Uh, family members, you can also do the same. Share a word of appreciation. Thank you. A compliment to a family member. Faculty members, staff, colleagues, please do the same. Now is the time. Okay, thank you all very, very much. This year, of all years, I think we all need a little bit of that and a little more of that. So I urge you to keep that in mind. Seniors, your teachers, your classmates, your parents have helped you to develop your voice, your own fingerprint. Use it wisely, use it with humility. And as you wield your independent and proud Catlin Gable graduate voice in the world, I ask you to remember two things. One, use it to share gratitude for life and love and others. And number two, know when not to use your voice. Because we all learn sooner or later that we do learn more by listening than by talking. Today we celebrate your journey so far and yet to come, the boundless opportunities you have before you, the choices you will get to make. Congratulations for all that you have learned 
and all that you will come to understand. And now it's my pleasure to introduce Tiffany Toe, who will use her voice to recite the school chapter. Good evening. Today I will be reciting Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 13, verses 1 through 13. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and have not charity, I am become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up. Doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. Rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became <clears throat> a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. And now abideth faith, hope, Charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. Thank you. Good evening. If you ask me what the most memorable class at Catlin has been, like many of my classmates, I would say my ninth grade history class, Human Crossroads. And if you ask me what the most impactful class at Catlin has been for me, like many of my classmates, I'd also say Human Crossroads. In a year of personal and global hardship, entering high school and grappling with gun violence and climate change tragedies, Cliff's classroom was a place every student could bring their full selves and dive into course material through the lens of their own experiences. With a background in law, academia, and journalism, from Florida to Massachusetts to Oregon, Cliff always encouraged us to think interdisciplinarily. What's more, he instilled habits of critical thinking, not just to get the grade, but to better understand the world. In just three years at Catlin, he deeply affected people all across the community, helping to found the debate team, advising the Black Student Union, coaching track and basketball in middle and high school, and of course, being our ninth grade class advisor. Cliff, we are better students, people, and citizens of the world for having known you. And we wish you all the best in your newest role as a Dean of Students at the Sequoia School in California. Friends, family, teachers, and colleagues, it is my honor to introduce our 2021 graduation speaker, Cliff Mason. Katie tried to set me up to shed tears before I even begin. K 
Catlin Gable, graduating class of 2021. You all have been through it. When you entered the upper school four years ago, the Eagle Creek wildfires were raging and forced us inside to avoid the smoke inhalation. And then just two and a half years later, a global pandemic fundamentally changed our way of life. Then as you entered your final semester in, in high school, insurrectionists attacked the seat of government at our nation's capital. But you're here. And you certainly learned a ton about yourselves along the way. Staying motivated, inspired, uplifted, and managing to overcome all that adversity, those were not individual feats. You all were fortunate to have your family, and your friends, your coaches, your advisors, your teachers to support you along this journey. So students, graduates, I'll ask you to stand and recognize your parents, your family, your friends, your teachers that helped you that are here with us and all of those who are not here with us, who cannot join us here today. Thank you. You know, growing up, many of us had to endure the constant back in my day references. And at least now, when your parents or your grandparents try to regale you with stories of walking 20 miles to school in the snow, you can look at them confidently and, and respond, oh, really, 20 miles? Did you walk those 20 miles while wearing a mask during a global pandemic? No. Well, let's just call it even then. If you ask this class what is their fondest memory from the past four years, they'll describe moments where they were surrounded by their classmates. And I know because I asked them. And from global trips with Spencer to seeing the entire community, pre-K through upper school, coming together to celebrate and cheer on our soccer teams, during those homecoming matches, to lounging around the hammock or in, or in shared spaces, to chatting, to gaming, and listening to Kellen brag about the baseball team, or watching Bowen share endless videos of him making miraculous saves on repeat. <laughs> this class, above all, appreciates each other. And so it's only fitting that really in less than a half an hour, this illustrious group will be inducted into the Catlin Gable Alumni Association where their lifelong bond will be cemented. And it's an incredible honor to be here to witness that transition firsthand. While the last 16 months have been at times impossible to find joy, there is some solace in knowing that our ability to socially gather is enabled by medical advances related to vaccines. And as you enter this new challenging segment of your lives, I want you to think about the impact of vaccines as you consider how to most constructively inject all that you are and believe into society. You are going to change the world. I don't hope that. I know it because everyone that has had the opportunity to work with you, their life has been enhanced as a result. While you grapple with how your decisions are gonna influence the collective, I want you to consider a few things. You're going to cure cancer. You're going to end gun violence. You're going to protect the LGBTQ plus community. You're going to change the world when you decide to inject yourself and to solve these issues. Don't sell short the power of your mindset. See, we have a tendency in the face of tragedy and evil to claim that's not us or we're better than that or some inane equivalent of that dribble. 
But in thinking about what most benefits the collective, it's only fitting that we speak truth to power. So we set aside the surprise that accompanies our observation of racism or cruelty or injustice, and we recognize that while we aren't better than what we see, we understand and we mobilize to make sure to put ourselves on a trajectory to be better. This won't be easy. If it were easy, some of you wouldn't be shifting in your seats right now. You wouldn't be hesitating to make eye contact with the person to your left or to your right. But in these moments, the only person you need to look to is in the mirror staring at you. That is who you need to make proud. That is the only person you will face every day for the rest of your life. That is the person you need to ask, in what kind of world do I want to live? And what am I willing to sacrifice to create that world? Changing the world won't be easy. But nothing this class has achieved has been easy. A couple years ago, I attended a state championship swim meet. I watched our team compete at the highest level. And they positioned themselves to place in the top three by the final race. That final race was a relay. And I recall the roar of the crowd and the excitement as swimmers dove into the water in hopes of carrying their team to victory. The best team won, Catlin Gable, of course. Or so we thought, because the look of confusion and horror on the girls' faces indicated a result that we had not anticipated. We'd been disqualified. It was devastating. I remember the tears. But you know what else I remember? I remember no blaming, no finger pointing, no yelling. I remember the girls hugging each other, looking into each other's eyes as if to say, we'll be back. And if you followed the athletics program, you know, were they ever back with a vengeance? And in 2019, what'd they do? Brought home a state championship. That wasn't easy. That took guts. It took commitment and a dedication to each other. You know what else isn't easy? And I'm not taking shots at the soccer team. It's, it's not easy to lose year after year after year to your crosstown rival. Phenomenal regular season, qualify for the final, losing the state championship to the crosstown rival. Phenomenal regular season, qualify for the final, lose to your crosstown rival in the state championship. Rinse, wash, repeat. That's not easy. So you know what they did? They rallied and they outworked that crosstown rival. And I know because one morning on the weekend, 7 a.m., pouring down rain, it's Portland, I see a familiar face. And Sophie Wan might not remember this, but I approach the track as I'm walking my dog to say hi. <laughs> and she sees me and not dismissively, but just with a laser focus. Hi, Cliff. And kind of waves me off. And without missing a beat, gets right back into those speed ladder drills. And I knew in that moment, this kid is going to do something special on the soccer pitch. And sure enough, that rinse, wash, repeat cycle had ended and helped carry that team to consecutive state championships and being named player of the year. That's the kind of focus and determination this class has shown time after time. Sean showed it in winning multiple chess championships. Katie McCauley showed it as diversity coordinator, advocating for equity. Patina shows it every time we get to hear that angelic voice singing. Sarah Robertson shows it every time she puts pen to paper and makes words come alive. Benji shows it whenever he collects books for babies in the NICU. This class has built a remarkable resume of accomplishments. And the only thing you have left to do is to change the world.
Now, don't mistake this message as merely a recommendation. You're too wise. You're too talented. This is an expectation. No. This is a clarion call to utilize this intellect and these skills and your curiosity to inoculate empathy and justice and goodness and love into society. There's a passage I believe that best encapsulates my admiration and hope for this Catlin Gable graduating class. And it comes from a Sonia Sanchez poem titled, Poem for July 4th. It is essential that we finally understand this is the time for the creative human being. The human being who decides to talk upright in a human fashion in order to save this earth from extinction. This is the time for the creative man, woman, who must decide that she, he, can live in peace, racial and sexual justice on this earth. This is the time for you and me. African American, whites, Latinos, gays, Asians, Native Americans, lesbians, Muslims, all of us must finally bury the elitism of race superiority, the elitism of sexual superiority, the elitism of economic superiority, the elitism of religious superiority. If we, the people, work, organize, resist, come together for peace, racial, social, and sexual justice, it'll get better. It'll get better. Take heed of those words from Sonia Sanchez graduates. Inject your spirit, your toughness, your benevolence, and your intelligence into a society in dire need of each of those qualities. Rises in anti-Asian hate crimes tells us we need an inoculation. Threats to women's rights tells us we need an inoculation. Growing anti-Semitism tells us we need an inoculation. Refusal to acknowledge that Black Lives Matter tells us we need an inoculation. The residual value of the love and empathy that you show each other will be the virtue by which you are remembered. Let your heart be a gateway and let your love be the injection of good that changes this world. Thank you and congratulations class of 2021. And now I invite Emma McNeil as a class speaker. Hello, family, friends, teachers, and administration. It's an honor to be able to stand before you today delivering this speech as we reflect on the past four years, look forward to what's next, and make goals for our future. Now, I told myself that I wasn't going to get up here and complain about this last year, <laughs> but I lied. <laughs> I am all for looking on the bright side, and yeah, it's important to positively reframe your narrative or whatever, but wow, <laughs> this year was anything but easy. And it's vital that we acknowledge the dumpster fire that was this last year so that we can move on from it. Let's talk about doing chem labs over Zoom. Isolation and loneliness, rejection from numerous colleges, losing touch. A news cycle that seemed to foretell the end of the world every other day. Abbreviated sports seasons in the wrong seasons, debilitating senioritis, and living life through TikTok. And if you haven't gotten sick of the phrase unprecedented times by now, you're a better person than I. <laughs> no matter what you had to do to get through it, change yourself, cry every day, take up knitting, binge watch at another season of your fourth favorite show on Netflix, neglect your homework. It's over now. We've made it. So to the class of 2021, congratulations. I've been attending Catlin since I was five years old. 
That's 72.222% of my life. For reference, here are a few things that were happening in 2008. Madonna was topping the charts. President Obama was elected for his first term. I'm losing that now. And rumor has it, Dave Whitson still had some hair. <laughs> Throughout my time here, I've thought about this very moment and the school year preceding it so many times. And it's no question that this is not the way I wanted to go out. As naive as it might sound, I always imagine my senior year the way you see it in the movies. The freedom of being 18, the never-ending rays of sunshine, and every once in a while breaking into song and dance. We've been told since we were young that senior year would be the best years of our short little lives before college. We get to be the big dogs on campus, feel at home in our own skins, plan for our futures, take over the senior benches, and hang out with our friends as a lot of our responsibilities dwindled in the second semester. Needless to say, that's not what happened. But there were so many bright spots that we also have to look back on. The world may have been throwing relentless curveballs, but today we celebrate our triumphs. 9 a.m. start times, class from bed, plenty of family time, or too much family time, being forced outside to see our friends, open note tests, actually having a plan for the fall, going on hikes or surfing or just sleeping in on asynchronous Wednesdays, and of course, making it to today. It wasn't even four years ago when we walked onto campus for our first day of freshman year. We were doe-eyed as we tried to figure out where the bat cave was and how not to get the infamous sig figs written on our science tests. We trudged our way through understanding Othello and learning how to pronounce each word in the Greek recitation. And by the time sophomore year arrived, we were ready for the year to come. For the most part, we knew what to expect. Right in the middle of the pack, our label as freshies no longer rang as a prompt to carry gear during sports seasons. It was our year to relax, watch Aline's dog chase balloons during assemblies, cheer on our classmates in the play and musical, appreciate the success of the robotics team, even if they're known to be a cult, get hyped for sporting events, and enjoy our last moments of freedom from college talk. And then junior year came, and it started like any other. Finally, upperclassmen, sports triumphed, clubs convened, and theatrical performances were raving success. While we were busy dreading the inevitable liberalism paper for US history or how we were supposed to remember the math we were learning now, eight months later, March snuck up on us, bringing what we thought would be a nice, relaxing two-week break. But we all know how the end of that story goes. Numerous canceled SATs and ACTs later, our senior year arrived. While the end of junior year and the beginning of this one might have blended together as we stared at glitchy screens caused by Wi-Fi wi crashes, we persevered. We applied to colleges, found creative ways to hang out with friends, eventually ended up back here together again on campus, and did whatever it took to get us to today. And now that high school is behind us, we can look forward to the future, whatever that may look like. This chapter of our lives may be coming to a close, but so much remains for us to discover in this world. A big part of getting each and every one of us to this point is the support we received along the way. It wouldn't feel right to give the speech without also giving a big thank you to our friends, families, and teachers who pushed us past our comfort zones just at the right moments, sat and listened when we needed it more than we needed the advice, and held us up when we couldn't stand alone. To our family and friends that have put up with us over all of these years, <laughs> thank you. I'm sure I'm not the only one who stayed up late to write the India-Congo comparative essay that I purposefully saved for the two days before it was due, or had to cram for the latest Science 2 test, but yet you've remained patient, trusting, and supportive. Thank you to Kenny and Sue, who have worked hard as our fearless class advisors this year and to the ERT who have kept us all safe. And lastly, thank you to our dedicated teachers who have given up lunches and free periods to help us with everyday tests, projects, and assignments. The last year and a half has truly been a testament of what it means to be a dedicated teacher and student, 
And throughout all we have undertaken, you have risen beyond your expected roles to help us continue to grow both as students and as a community. And we can never thank you enough for that. So I say again, congratulations to the class of 2021 for all of your accomplishments. To close, I would like to call on the wisdom of yet another iconic high school senior, Ferris Bueller, to impart some advice on the seniors sitting among us today. Life moves pretty fast sometimes, and if you don't stop and look around, you might miss it. So let's stop, just for a moment, and take in everything we have achieved. The people who helped get us there, the memories that we've made, and the bright futures we have ahead because I wanna make sure this is a moment we don't miss. Thank you. Thank you, Emma. Thank you, Cliff. Thank you, Tiffany. And I also want to thank, before we move on, um, our extraordinary head of upper school, Aline Garcia Rubio, who has guided the, the upper school division and the senior class through these most perilous times over the past year or so. So thank you, Aline, for your leadership. And now it's my pleasure to invite Aline to join me as we present diplomas to the class of 2021. Mara Alfrey. Mega Aluri. Rishi Aluri. Essie Grace Ashton. <laughs> Katie Barnacle. Bowen Blair. Ben Bachman. Thea Broad. Eva Marie Carlson. Catherine Chang. Zoe Chase. <laughs> Emma May K. Clark. <laughs> Emma 
Eve Cody. Kristen Kors. Elizabeth Cook. Adrian Delatze. Julia Eleanor Drucker. Jaden Anthony Edwards. Justin Tyler Edwards. Hannah Ainsley Ellis. Kai Fernandez Powell. Madison Nicole Gadba. Kai Wilson Gamboa. Miles Grant. Anushka Gupta. Yeah. Riley Olivia Hart. Yeah. Chloe Alexandra Eber. Isla Hoffman. <laughs> Caroline Hyde. <laughs> William Johnston.
Noah Kim. Sophie May Cruz. <laughs> Tulip Larson. Tomic Luang Patrom Aram <laughs> Dylan Lian. Emma Lindner. Hannah Yuhan Ma. Emma McNeil. Catherine Laura McCauley. Let's go, Katie. Milo Means. Sophia Snow Maniakis. Neha Mainani. <laughs> Josh Negranu. Andrew Jacob Nemechek. <laughs> Divine Niyun Gecko.
Grant Pamplin North. Bram Nutt. Benjamin Olshin. Kel Olson. Nathaniel Ryan Paradis. <laughs> Kelly Yumi Park. Andrew Michael Priest. Yeah. Michael James Put. Sarah Kamak Robertson. <laughs> Nikhil Saha. Jackson Schroeder. Adam Simon. Karen Snyder. <laughs> Sophia Spry. Michaela Spencer Stout. Sydney Straw. Mateo Joaquin Sufuentes.
Theodore Francis Tannehill. Patina Emmanuel Mwanga Todd. Tiffany Toe. Thea Antonia Tra. Sebastian Raymond Tremblay. Sean Alexander Wanzoli. Grant Michael Underwood. Isabel Claire Vestergaard. <laughs> Zoe Wechter. Sophie Wand. <laughs> Eric Wong. Braden Wells. <laughs> Jedediah Bean Whalen Stewart. Helen Isamu Woodcock. <laughs> Rachel Ann Yokin. Sasha Zeidman. <laughs> Jonah Zeller.
How's that? We get a little bit of a restart. It's really nice from here. Congratulations really to all of you, families, faculty, friends. Thank you for joining us in recognition of this persevering, intelligent and caring seniors. Most if not all people in this audience, here on campus and at home, have had a role in shepherding this group into adulthood. Some of you have made dinners and birthday cakes. You've offered rides and advice, bandaged wounds, swam through waves and currents, the metaphorical and the concrete. And you've done this lovingly. Maybe you purchased a musical instrument or you taught how to catch a ball or you sang songs or explained your family history. Maybe you've just been a pillar for being there, present. I know for certain pretty well that parents who are here have advocated and applauded and watched their seniors grow and be healthy and do good things. The accomplishments of these young people they reflect our collective effort too. People have said that all night, but it, do, it is worth repeating. Gathering and celebration is appropriate, and I'm so, so glad that we could gather. What a gift to be together. Graduations are markers of time, seniors, and of effort, of skill, of significant growth. It is fitting that we are on this field, a field, field of success, the, of tears where you have sprint, sprinted and sweated, when you've, where you've celebrated, you've played in teams or on the sidelines. I know you have had moments of quiet reflection right here, some in that tree. You've come together against adversaries here, physical adversaries and the more complex ones, the ones that grumble within us, in our minds. It is against adversity that you persevered this year. Each of you, in different versions of a path, you found your way to this moment. Despite the isolation and the distancing, the magnet screenings, the exhaustion of screens, rapid tests, hidden smiles. We miss the smiles. Despite, despite that backdrop of national and global strife that Cliff was talking about, in the context of all the losses and the worries, you found your way, and now you have arrived. I hope that you have taken the necessary steps of reflection in a very Catlin-esque way uh, to fully realize that you arrived through consistent effort, discipline, much repetition, and dedication. Your dedication. Well done. We, your teachers and parents, we admire your tenacity. We really do. Your intelligence. You don't know, but we oftentimes, uh, oftentimes think, oh, they're smarter than me. And most importantly, we admire your good hearts. I need to say a few words about your teachers. Dear faculty, would you please stand up? I'm gonna ask you to stay standing for a little bit. Students, find a way to turn around three-fourths of the way and whatever makes sense, and look for a faculty member. Maybe your advisor. Maybe someone who believed in you, who inspired you, who read your essays, who saw you, who offered a push that elevated you to what you thought wasn't possible for yourself. You found your person? We feel so much affection towards you. I really hope you can feel it. These teachers have thought about you every single day over the last four years. Really, they have. Each night, they prepare a day of work with you in mind. When they give you feedback, when they write to you, when they talk to you in the quad or through a computer, when they witness you shooting hoops or making robots or on stage or in the fields, they do 
all of this with you in mind, they care for you. We care for you. Each person standing brings their experience and expertise and love to each lesson each day. This year they did that despite personal and global worries with muted students, sometimes dark boxes with no faces, in the isolation of an empty kitchen or a living room turned classroom and with all sorts of other stressors in the mix. They brought their best to each day of work. They deserve our appreciation. Dear colleagues, I thank you for your stamina and your generosity on this most exceptional and challenging year in education. Thank you. Like the teachers, a lot of people have worked hard to support the seniors toward this moment. But the people who have worked the hardest and whom I recognize with most respect and admiration are you, these young people, the seniors. You have worked so hard. I want to make sure you consider this closely and that you remember it. You just did something really hard. You can do hard things. Each of you can do hard things. Remember that. You will need to remember it. Each year at graduation, I think of the wisdom that, wisdom that has been imparted to me by experiences, but mostly by people in this very good and messy life. I sometimes read children's books, the type with very few words and uh, a lot of drawings of adventures and animals and cartoons, cartoon monsters sometimes with big teeth. I recommend this, by the way, not the monsters, but the rereading of your childhood books. They're really good at synthesizing essential messages. Do you remember George and Martha, the two big best friend hippos? Or the giving tree with the embracing branches? Or there was this one large panda who, in a dialogue with an anxious boy who happened to be nervous about the events ahead, asked, what would you do if you were in a spelling bee? And the bear flatly replied, I would spell words. Let's pause here for a second. It's funny, but whatever your version of a spelling bee might be, just do what is required by the task ahead. As I mentioned, I draw my words from courageous people who talk about pandas or from pandas or through pandas or from people who know and teach how to live well. People like Dale, from Suzuki Roshi, from friends in this audience. Thank you, friends in this audience. From Glennon Doyle and from my mother, from ancient texts that you may have read in Lissa's sacred narrative class, from a few journalists and Cheryl Strait. She said that we thrive not in spite of our losses our so and sorrows, but because of them. We would have never chosen this year for you. I know you wouldn't have chosen it for yourself. I think you've told me that plenty. And yet, I am grateful we had this experience. You now know intimately and authentically that you have the ability to fill many voids where there is emptiness and strife, you can fill the void. And if you couldn't fill the void and life is still feeling empty, you now know, you really know, that you have the ability to pursue healing. You are doing that right now. Whether you feel exhausted, proud, confused, elated, unmotivated, excited, maybe all those things. You are at the, at the top of a mountain, looking out into the vastness, seeing possibilities, the expanse of what, you hand, of what you want ahead of you. No one gets to the peak of a mountain top from the top. You have to climb to it. And over the last 18 months, but really over the last 18 years, 
you have climbed to this moment. In a few minutes, you will climb that small hill onto the first day of the rest of your lives. And as you look at the vastness ahead and take some steps into that metaphorical wilderness, I hope you will keep two ideas in mind. What you do is who you become and who you are. I have a good friend who engages in some daily rituals, walking, writing a certain number of words, stretching. So he becomes a writer, a walker, a limber person. As you meander through the days, reading history or talking to your friends or putting your hands in harvesting oil or watching documentaries about, I don't know, politics or rice or octopi, these thoughts and activities are your becoming. Elect who you want to become. If you practice the violin, if you explore biochemical questions in the lab, if you practice speaking Mandarin or justice, or if you practice relentless kindness, who will you become? Whatever you do, try as much as you can to stay present, stay aware, so you can live your life fully. When you are eager to do something, for something to end, to do something different, for a situation to pass, maybe for it to be cooler, for the sun to set, for July to arrive, or the pandemic to end, consider staying with the uncomfortable. We learn so much about ourselves in the uncomfortable. But also, we really have nothing else but the now. You are here. You can be nowhere else. We only have a reality. If we're constantly wishing for a different one, escaping to scroll through the Instagram feed or hoping for someone to love us differently, for the Canadian border to open, hoping to feel something else or to move to San Sebastian or have these shoes or that car, we might miss out on what is ours and what is happening right now. That's not to say that we shouldn't pursue worthy endeavors. Cliff just told us about that. We can stay present and work toward better for ourselves and for those around us. And by the way, to stay present, please consider staying sober. No one is fully aware when numbed and altered. The second suggestion is to surround yourself with the people that you love. You have done that quite well, especially of late, I think. And it sounds really simple, though the execution of loyalty, time spent together, and the constant return to those who care about us can fall prey to distractions. Relationships also require consistent effort, discipline, much repetition, and dedication. Cultivate these, for happiness is found with the people that we love. My sincere wish is that each of you will find the people that you will love closely, deeply, and that you will identify what you most enjoy doing with your very well-educated mind and your time. Once you find your people on your path, love and do your task well. That will be your success. And just a few words about the people you don't love. Those who caught you off when you're driving down Burnside or who make the line at the grocery store go really slow or may, they may spit when they talk or you, they seem grim or shriveled in the heart. They only seem that way. They are likely in their own struggle with their own ambitions and fraught relationships, maybe attending to a friend in need, maybe washing others' dirt and scum, maybe healing from some deep pain. Consider it possible that they may be a lot like you, in a different version of desires and struggles. Despite all the goodness in life, we're all walking through some form of small or big suffering. And though we have been focused on emphasizing our diver on diversity, which has many, many benefits, we as people are more similar than we are different. These humans next to you, the whole three rows of new, newly graduated peers or almost graduated peers, I don't know exactly when the moment happens, 
carry some of your same fears, pains, and hopes. Individually and collectively, they are more similar to you than they are different. And you all form a whole together. I hope you will consider always to see yourself as part of a whole, a whole class, a whole family, a whole city, a whole world. You are an essential part of our school's whole. Dearest graduates, may you enter this next phase, the walk up that hill and what's beyond, knowing that we love you, not for what you have done, but for who you are. May you find your love and a good path for your becoming. Lunch, bloom, fly, we will be here to see you and do your best. That is what you're supposed to do. Congratulations. Families, faculty, friend, I present to you the class of 2021. <laughs> At this moment, this amazing celebration of the class of 2021 is coming to an end. Graduates, congratulations. Please rise and walk up that hill that Aline has inspired you to tackle. Family and friends, please stay seated for now. Esteemed faculty, may wake, you may wake, you may make your way up to Shaft Circle as well. Thank you. <laughs> 